Hey YouTube, in uh, my previous video I just want to mention about uh, Audio Hijack. They just put out an update that actually fixes the issue where I was trying to, I don't think I left it in the video, but I was trying to show how you can send title and track listing information to your uh, Icecast or Shoutcast server. And so that's been updated in uh, Audio Hijack 3.51, so that should work now. Now onto this video. I got a question from a viewer who asked, do you know how I can output audio to my headphones from only one track? The goal is to record a Skype call on two tracks. I wanna hear the caller, but I don't wanna hear myself. Let's just start with building a session for this right out of the gate. So we're just gonna start with a blank session just for fun. So we're wanting to record a conversation from Skype. So obviously we need to grab an application block, choose Skype from the drop down list. And we're wanting to record maybe my microphone as well as another audio device. So I'm going to choose, in my case, the Starlet 1818 device. And uh, I just want channel one to be recorded because that's the only channel that matters. And then let's say we are going to uh, we'll just record this maybe. Each one is its own track. We could choose something else. Um, let's say uncompressed AIFF. I like to do as long as you have the storage space for it and then that way whatever re audio you're recording is going to be as high quality as it can get. Let's throw in an EQ for our Skype call just so that if we want to we can make some adjustments like maybe there's a really high-end high-pitched scream <laughs> coming through the audio we could adjust that some of the presets will show you very quickly what you could do a bass booster if it's really trebly um, treble reducer if it's really trebly as well will work and vocal booster you can sort of play with these as your guest is talking um, generally I, I advise folks to not really EQ it too much because you can always do that in your audio editor of choice logic or whatever audacity that kind of thing but uh, it does give you a bit of control just even for your own listening pleasure while you're recording so just for fun we can put an EQ on my own here I could get a uh, bass reducer maybe and then it wouldn't be my voice tends to be fairly bassy and this microphone tends to amplify that enhance that and of course I also like to always put an audio meter of some form you can choose your uh, preference but uh, let's go with peak RMS meters on both tracks uh, I'm going to show one of the new things that you can do in here in audio hijack in 3.1 3.5 and higher is this toggle switch so I'm going to throw this in here just to uh, demo this. I'm going to start up another app, uh, Farago, which also received an update this week. So you can actually control Farago with MIDI controllers, which I'll maybe cover in a future demo video. Uh, so switching back to Audio Hijack, I'm going to add another app, Location, as the kids call it, and <laughs> choose Farago as the other application. And what this this new feature, the input switch, is is basically uh, you can see it's just switching which it's kind of like train tracks, right? <laughs> You're switching which uh, input source you want to pull from. I personally probably I don't see a lot of use for it for myself, but because I would rather just have Frogo on its own application track with its own recording, so that I can mix that down differently. But if you're doing something like in the previous video where you're having it uh, broadcast out to an internet radio station maybe and it's just all getting smushed together in a either mp3 or some sort of compressed audio to go out to the internet why not have it uh, switch so you can actually control which one is going to be sending audio and which one isn't i also like to give myself a volume control um, just before the rms meter just so that uh, if you need to for whatever reason while you're recording uh, you can't find maybe where the software controls are or anything like that. That way you can at least control quickly bump up or down the volume that's going in uh, that's being recorded. Finally, the uh, one thing I like to look for or I like to add as well is a this Dynamics processor, which I can throw in maybe before the EQ. And this will allow me to set up set it up such that the I can basically mute that track um, if there's not a certain level of audio coming in from it. Hey folks, sorry, I forgot to go into this in any sort of meaningful level, so I'll cover the Dynamics processor in a future video. Just remind me in the comments if I forget to. Okay, back to the video. So just to quickly demo how this works, the, the input switch, if I hit record, you can see right now my microphone is following through. You can see the lines going all the way through, it's being recorded. 
Great. And then if I switch this, then my microphone stops going through even though it's coming in. And Farago is the application that's going through. So if I put on a funky loop, you can see um, I can't hear it. So I don't think you can hear it right now in the recording. But you can see that the only thing going through is Farago, the audio app, music app. And so that way you can start kind of like have intro music playing, let's say, and then it does a crossfade back into your voice as you want to start your show or whatever it might be. Stop the recording, stop all the audio. Uh, one thing I'll need, and you may need, depending on how you have your devices set up, I'm using this external uh, Scarlett Focusrite uh, device. I need to actually be able to hear the audio <laughs> somewhere. And so I can throw either before the recorder or after the recorder m the audio coming out from each device. So now when I hit record, I'm actually hearing myself twice, which uh, if I turn off that block, <clears throat> then I won't hear myself but it is being recorded. This is the one downside to having, I think, having an audio application and your microphone on an input switch because um, you can't very easily set it up because obviously when Farago is playing something, I want to be able to hear that and so I have to turn on this block. But right now my audio isn't being recorded. And so that's a problem. But then when I switch back, here I get duplicate. So... Uh, that's where having the sound, I, I, that's where I'm not a huge fan of the input switch, but I can see why they put it in there maybe for certain other uses, especially live broadcasts and that kind of thing. One thing we noticed as we're recording here is that there's nothing being recorded by Skype. And so that's because there's no audio coming in from Skype. It's not, I'm not in a call. I don't have a uh, conversation going with anybody. Um, but that does throw off my audio that's being recorded. So right now there's, let's say it's for this session anyways, there's a minute 33 of audio that's been recorded on my track, the Scarlet track, and in the file that from Skype, there's nothing. And that makes it kind of hard to line up. So if you start the recording and you forget to maybe start the Skype call right away and there's no audio coming from them, or if they're not talking, then it's not recording. So there's a way around that. I'm just going to pause this. In the Skype application block, in the advanced settings, you can... Uh, make sure to fill playback gaps with silence so that even when the app is not generating any noise at all, it won't, uh, you won't, uh, it'll still keep recording. What you also need to do, and this is the an answer to the original question, <laughs> is you can turn off this include audio input. So then it's no longer including my audio from my microphone in the recording. The person at the other end with the Skype call is still going to get the recording or get, hear the audio from my microphone because Skype has that, my microphone set as the input. Skype itself will not record, or the, sorry, Audio Hijack will not record it into that track. So now I can hit record. You can see that Skype is actually being recorded, even though there's no audio coming through from Skype, as well as my audio is coming through. I can see that my audio is a little low, so I can actually adjust the gain on my recording device if I wanted to, which would throw off the rest of my <laughs> screen flow recording, or I could bump this up, let's say, into 2x overdrive, and then that would give me a little more room to, like, play with the audio in the recording. But again, I prefer to kind of, once you start recording, try to leave it more or less the same, unless you're doing, unless it's peaking, like it's going way above minus three, or it's way too quiet and, and down below, and you're not actually getting anything recorded. That's where you can use that volume slider to make adjustments. Okay, so switching over to Skype, I'm just gonna go, this is the new Skype, which is kind of annoying and frustrating and weird, but in audio video settings, uh, right now it's set to my built-in microphone. I'm gonna change that to the Scarlett and I don't want it to uh, adjust anything automatically for me. I want to be able to just talk. Uh, I'm just going to test the audio. So you can see in Audio Hijack even for right now, it's recording that audio because as soon as I hit stop, you'll see there's no audio coming from Skype. So I can press that. That'll give me a quick way of testing. I don't know why I have to use that to see the camera works. And let's try making a free test call to see if everything is actually working the way it should be. Hello, welcome to Skype call testing service. After the beep, please record a message. Afterwards, your message will be played back to you. Hello, this is the message from uh, Chris testing out the Skype call testing service. Please let me know if it's working. Hello, this is a message from uh, Chris testing out the Skype call testing service. Please let me know if it's working. If you are able to hear your own voice, then you have configured Skype correctly. If you hear this... 
All right, so it's all working. Seems to be. Now what we can do is just double check the file that I recorded, files, I guess, that I recorded to make sure that they have each of the audio uh, segments that we're supposed to have as well. So I'm going to hit stop on the recorder and then go down here to recordings. And unfortunately, I named it new blank session, which is not very exciting. Uh, I can tell by the date and time just as to what which one is the most recent here. And let's just play this. Move it ahead a little bit. So this is the Skype call, I think. You can hear the test audio. So right now you're not hearing me recording the voice because that was on my input channel, right? So that didn't get recorded, but now you'll hear it when it's played back. Okay, so that's my the audio from my side of the Skype call, and then this is the audio of just my microphone recorded. You'll hear a bit of bleed because my, my headphones actually, I need to get some new headphones because they're, I think they've got some bleed of audio that's coming, getting picked up by my mic uh, when I play back or when I'm in conversation. One thing you can do to help yourself later is when you're in the recording here, you can name this properly. Instead of, as you saw in my recordings, it's just date and a number and then recording and then recording two and it kind of makes it hard to figure out which is which so because i know this is the skype recording i can say call this date time and then call it uh put let's say skype recording in there if i wanted and this one could be my mic recording let's say so now if i hit record starts a new call skype recorder is being recorded scarlet microphone is being recorded I hit stop if i go to recordings now I can see very quickly my, my mic recording and Skype recording are labeled and much easier to figure out which is which. And if I click down here and go to Actions and F Reveal and Finder, you'll see that even the file names are named appropriately. And so that means just easier to find stuff later after you've recorded it and you're not sure where that file ended up. So that's a quick overview of how to use Audio Hijack to record a Skype call, maybe for a podcast or for a meeting or any number of reasons why you might want to use uh, Skype and Audio Hijack. If you've got a question or comment or something not working for you with Audio Hijack or related audio software on your Mac, please leave a comment in the field below and I'd love to answer that in a future video or write in the comments. I try to stay as active as I can in there uh, along with the other viewers who are out there who stop by in the comments. So thank you for that. And of course, if you want to hire me to help you out with your podcast or audio needs, you can do so at lemonproductions.ca and check out how you can get in touch with me there. And of course, give this video a thumbs up if you please and you can subscribe over here. You can watch a previous video or whatever the YouTube machine recommends to you over there and uh, do all the other YouTube stuff that you like to do. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a great day. Bye. So since um, 